Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Wednesday midweek act of worship as we gather um, as an old oasis in the middle of our week uh, as the people of St. Leonard's and St. Mary's. And anyone else is joining in from wherever you're joining in, we welcome you. We begin with the lighting of our candles as we remember the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit who is with us. We will light a light in the name of the Maker. We will let the world and breathe the breath of life into us. We will light a light in the name of the Son. who saved the world and stretched out his hand in love to us. We will light a light in the name of the Spirit who encompasses the world and blesses our souls with yearning. We will light three lights for the Trinity of love, God above us, God beside us, God beneath us, the beginning, the end, the everlasting one. Gather us in, Lord, the lost and the lonely, the broken and breaking, the tired and aching, the young and the old, the stranger and the friend. Forgive us and heal us, strengthen and renew us, for we are one family with Christ Jesus as our head. Yeah. 
in him be found, oh yeah, dressed in his righteousness alone, faultless stand before the throne. Day of technical glitches again. <laughs> a reading for today. Uh, the reading is for this Sunday coming, but it's as a passage that we've been mentioning throughout this time of creation time. A reading from Romans 8. Romans 8, at verse 14. Paul writes For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you receive brought about your adoption to sonship and by his mercy we cry, Abba, Father. The spirit himself testifies with our spirit, that we are God's children. Now, if we are children of God, then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs with Christ. If indeed we share his sufferings in order that we might also share in his glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration, not of its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it, in hope that the creation itself would be liberated from its bondage to decree and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. We know that the whole creation has been groaning as in the pains of childbirth, right up until that present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the the redemption of our own bodies. For in this hope we are saved. Hope that is seen as no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait patiently for it. There's a lot in that passage a lot about our position as believers in Christ, as people who are trying to follow Christ, that wonderful gift of being brought into God's family, adoption to sonship. We have heard before that sometimes people get, might get upset with this because they see sonship as being male-orientated. However, in Paul's writing, uh, as it's been discovered, in the Roman system of law, adoption to sonship is basically full adoption into the family. So a, a Roman could adopt someone and that person have full rights of the family and be able to share fully in the inheritance of that family. And it's that promise that we are brought into, that we are adopted into the family of God. Of course, in this modern day, it's easier to say we are adopted as children of God, not to make it a male or a female issue. We can cry out, Abba, Father. We can cry out to God. And Paul relates this crying out to God as something that not only 
something that we do as humans, but that all of creation is crying out to God, waiting for a final day, a day when things will be made new, a day of liberation, a day of freedom, a day when we all break free of the bondage to the old and are brought into the new. And while we wait for that day, we're encouraged to do so with hope, hope in something that's unseen, hope in something we have yet to grasp, but has been offered to us, and to hope as we wait patiently. I pray that God would renew your hope this day, as you remember that you are a child of God, that you have a right to come and to cry out to Abba Father with all your concerns, your hurts, your pains, as well as your joys and pleasures to come and give thanks, to trust that God is at work and one day we with all creation will be liberated from our bondage and brought in to the freedom of the glory to come. We're brought into that adoption, no longer to be slaves to sin and the old, no longer to fear death and the future, but to trust in God, for we are children of God. Our song, no longer a slave, I am a child of God.
So we come and cry out in prayer to Abba, our Father. Abba, Father, we turn to you with our prayers and our concerns for the world and its people and for your church and ourselves. Lord, we continue to pray for the world that you live, for all the immense issues that surround global issues. And Lord, acknowledge that we at times just feel so insignificant uh, as everything's played out on that world stage. Yet, Lord, you call us to to pray and to pray for you to interview. Praying again, Lord, for people to love justice and mercy and to, to seek what is good for all humanity. Lord, continue to pre prepare all those involved in the, the COP26 for the delegates that they come together and that, Lord, that they come together with a purpose and a desire to improve our climate throughout the world, to work together as nations. Lord, we continue to pray for places of unrest, for those that fill our news and for those that are not mentioned at all. Lord, we pray that in each country and each nation, peacemakers would be able to rise up and influence the direction of, of, of these countries, that people would indeed seek ways of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we continue to pray for the work against COVID and the outrolling of vaccinations and Lord for our own nation as we consider the best way forward for the winter with booster jags or, or issuing uh, these vaccines to, to younger people. Or we pray too that vaccines would be made available to those countries who may not have the resources that we have. Lord, continue to bring forth uh, a way forward for us to live and to work within the, the situation, Lord, to live as best we can. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we've been hearing a lot in the news about concern about food delivery and food production, and worry and concerns about energy prices. Lord, we pray again for wisdom for our respective parliaments. Our UK parliament would work well in, in securing the things that are needed for the population. We pray too for good relationships between the Westminster and the other devolved powers, Lord, that they would work together for the good of the people of these lands. Lord, we pray too for your church, scattered throughout the world, that she indeed would be a living and active body. And for us locally, as the churches of St. Leonard's and St. Mary's, we pray again. Praying for your presence to be known, for your touch to be active in our lives. And we bring before you those in our hearts and minds. We continue to pray for John and for Jean. We pray too for Norma Wano and her family. For Anne Miller. 
for Dorothy and Robert. For Kate and Patrick Mark. For Julia. For Ruth Smith. For Mary Foreman and, and Jane for Sai. Lord, we thank you for all these people and pray your touch would be upon them, that you would strengthen them and give them the resolve for the days ahead. Lord, we pray for you to, to, to heal and to return these people to us to a time of fellowship and comfort and a time of strengthening at home. Lord, we pray too for those facing difficult times ahead with cancers and other things going on. Lord, give them that ability to cry out to you. And may you hear and answer their cries, Lord. We pray for those who are preparing for their wedding day. Especially this day, we pray for Anne-Marie and Ronnie as they prepare for their wedding on Friday. And Lord, although this time is full of mixed emotions, we pray that Friday would indeed be a happy day for them, a day of much joy to be enjoyed and remembered. And in time, as Ronnie faces his closing days, that, Lord, that would be brought to a peaceful end. Lord, we pray for Anne-Marie and the wider family as they come to rejoice, come to celebrate, but also tinged with that knowledge that death looks waiting Lord, we just pray that you give Ronnie many more days to come to enjoy the life that he has. Lord, we pray too for the families that are considering bringing their children to, to be baptised. We pray for all the preparation in the background and finding the right dates and times for, for these services. We thank you, Lord, for these families. Lord, we thank you for the, the wider church. Often we, we just focus, Lord, on those who gather on a Sunday. But, Lord, we thank you that your church has a wider reach into many different households and families. And so we pray, Lord, for all who are connected with our churches, that they would be stirred and come to know you as a the Father who watches over them. Lord, we pray too for our desire to do something with our messy church families. And Lord, as we pray for this autumn winter season, help us to consider the best way forward. Lord, we thank you for your love that you call us into that adoption, to be your children, knowing, Lord, that we can come to you and even in the midst of difficult times, raise a hallelujah, for you are the God who will bring us through this present suffering, through these present times, into a new glory to come. Amen. Our closing hymn. Pity Betty's not with us, she loves this one. I raise a hallelujah.
So as we wait in eager expectation, an expectation for that day of freedom and complete renewal to come. We do so knowing that we are children of God. And therefore, in the midst of all that goes on, we raise our hallelujahs to our Father. And we go with his blessing in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Thank you for joining with us for this short act of worship. Apologies for the technical glitches. Always out of our hands and always bring a moment of frustration and fun. Do join with us on Sunday mornings if you can, 9.30 down at St Mary's and 11.15 uh, at uh, St Leonard's. And if you have been, uh, if that's what you want to do, then if you have been, thank you for watching and do leave us a comment. Bye.